hello hello good morning i wanted to do a quick video because i've had some people asking about level one ages three to five so the babies these are the littlest kids and a lot of people are hesitant to teach these kids so I'm gonna give you my seven tips and you can decide after listening to this if you think that level one is right for you spoiler alert I love level one and I think you will love level one and I think you should give it a try even if you are not naturally inclined to teach younger kids a couple reasons right off the bat before I even give you my tips no, level one is always looking for teachers. It's a very full level. Parents in China want to start their kids at a very young age. You will see students who are like three years old. I, I don't want it to freak you out. Well, there are some different things about level one, some tips. The first tip is you need to lower your expectations. Most people start out teaching level two or three and it's very academic and you're teaching a lot of vocabulary and it's the students are ready to learn. For level one, you just need to lower your academic expectations. They really are not expected to do very much aside from listen and repeat. Yes, we want them to, to remember words, we want them to recall words, we want them to speak clearly, but really, you are just their first introduction to English. Don't get frustrated. I see so many people posting about, oh, my student, all he does is parrot, repeat after me. Yeah, that's what they're supposed to be doing at this level. The rest will come. You're setting the foundation. So lower your academic expectations. My second tip, lower your behavior expectations. <laughs> because yes, you should expect good behavior and the parents are paying for these lessons. So yes, they are worthwhile and important. But you have to know that a three-year-old just developmentally cannot sit still for 25 minutes. So either you are gonna get them moving or they're gonna be moving and wiggly. <laughs> Don't expect a perfect student like this. No, they're gonna be moving, they're probably gonna have toys, they're probably gonna be eating, they're probably gonna be walking. A lot of times they go to the bathroom in the middle of the lesson, just brace yourself and lower your expectations so that you're not frustrated. The next thing I wanna say is, number three, my main tip is, just get them talking. So you're gonna use the screen, the slides, the curriculum, but whatever they are saying, go with it. They just get distracted. Go with their distractions, that's my point. Whatever you can get them speaking, that is a win. Yes, you need to get through the slides, yes, you need to cover all the objectives, but if you can get them talking, that's what the parents want. So those are my first three tips. Lower your expectations, lower behavior, get them talking. So some other tips, you need to be silly. And I know that's hard for some people, it's not your natural um, personality. You need to be okay with being silly. They need to have fun, they need to be learning through games and through fun and through laughter. Do funny faces, do different voices. Another tip for you, use TPR. Of course, TPR stands for total physical response. You'll be doing, yes, the educational TPR, like listen, speak. I use it as my personal goal every lesson to get the kid moving. Because in level one, we're teaching, whether the old level one or the new level one, we're teaching a lot of action words. So like when we teach swim, you're getting the kid to do this. When you're teaching run, actually get up and run. And any action you can get them to do is very good. Be moving constantly. Another tip is engage the parents. So almost always with level one, the parents are in the room. They should be, I hope they are. Don't just pretend like they're not there. I often say, hello mom, hello dad. And sometimes the parents will speak, you know, just like in any other level. Sometimes the parents have strong English, sometimes they don't. Like I just taught the level one lesson where it's about hair. And it was like short hair, long hair. And it was a little boy, so he had short hair. And then I was like, mom? And he pulled mom into the screen and mom was like, hi. And I said, mom has long hair. And then mom helped us with the lesson. Mom was like a human prop. Side note, if the parents are engaged and connected to you, they're more likely to leave feedback. They're more likely to make you the regular teacher. They're more likely to do priority booking and it just builds a relationship, which I see as a really big goal. Be silly, use TPR, engage the parents, and then last tip I have for you, and this is really your preference, but I think a standing desk is 
awesome for a level one. I have a desk with a little raised part for my laptop, but I also have this standing desk that I pull up and put on my desk when I want to stand. It just encourages you to move more, which then encourages the student to move more, and then the learning is even better. So those are my tips for level one. I want to encourage you that yes, it is very different than level two. You will at first have a bit of a culture shock. You'll be like, oh, these are babies. Are they learning anything? But yes, let me encourage you. They are learning. Um, I got to experience this from the opposite side. We started my five-year-old daughter with Lincobus, and I was like kind of embarrassed at first. And I was like, oh, she's so wiggly. She can't sit still but you would not believe how much she has learned. And now she's six and she can sit a little bit more, she can focus a little bit more, and it's going really well. I think you have to kind of think of it as an investment. So I encourage you to just give it a try. If it doesn't work for you, you can always you know, get rid of the certification, but I find more times than not when I encourage teachers to do it, they end up loving it. And it really does fill in your schedule, which is a nice, it's a nice side benefit. All right, those are my tips.